John Twist of University Motors, and today I'm tuning a Mini. It is the ultimate Mini rat rod. Just look at, look at how this thing presents itself. I mean, it's all new underneath. Everything is, well, the engine isn't new. It's a used engine, but oh my gosh, it's absolutely beautiful inside and out, except that outside it looks like it's 38 years old and was driven hard and put away wet. Um, absolutely incredible job. Anyway, I'm tuning it today, and a tune-up is a tune-up on a, on a BMC engine. This is an A-series engine. The stuff I usually talk about are B-series engines fitted to the MGAs and MGBs, or the T-type engines, that's got an X engine. But this is the A-series, and it's just like an MG Midget or Sprite, except that it's turned sideways and you can't reach anything. So tuning these things is really difficult. So the first thing you do is take the bonnet off. I mean, you can make a case for taking the bonnet off on an MGB, but with a real long broomstick or a rope tied around the, to it and tied it to, to the trunk. Um, back bump or something or other, you can hold the, the bonnet aloft on a B, but here it's just like, oh my gosh, like trying to be a dentist working in someone's mouth. It's a real small area. Anyway, I'm just started, and um, first thing is to torque the head and adjust the valves, and when I took the valve cover off, I realized that the valve cover gasket was not adhered to the valve cover, so we're going to walk over here to the table. I took the... Um, I took my um, Ultra Black, you can see it sticking out here, and I laid a bead in the, on the um, valve cover, and then I pushed the, the gasket into it, and I'm just letting it cure while I'm doing the tune-up on a nice flat tabletop. Before I reinstall that, I'm going to paint the bottom side of it with a lot of red grease. You know I love red grease. Red grease, I think I get this, I think it's uh, um, Lucas grease now, I think there's a humor in that. NLGI number two, lithium grease, and I'm just starting to torque the head. So the first bolt that I took out, the first nut that I backed off, of course, the whole stud came out of the engine. So I walked over to the vise, undid the nut from the stud, put the stud back into the engine under about, I don't know, five pounds, something like that, and then put the nut back on top and oiled it. And I'm just about ready to torque it. I've got it set up here to 55 pounds, and I'm gonna bring it down. That's my click torque. I'm at 55 pounds. And now I can go to the next one. And again, it's like on an MGB or any of the engines. It's just a spiral round and round and round to make sure that that head's nice and tight. So we'll come back a little bit later um, and show you what more I've done. I'm not sure when my cameraman can come back, but we've got to check the compression and, and we've got to set the timing and adjust the carbs. So. That's the scoop for today. Look at these rockers here. I don't know, I haven't seen these b before. These are um, um, not factory rockers, and they're not roller rockers, they're just heavier duty. I don't remember ever, ever having seen A-series rockers broken, but these are t twice, the, twice the size, so the chance of them um, fracturing is gonna be just tiny. So anyway, we'll, co we'll come back to this when my cameraman's available. So I'm all done torquing the head. <laughs> you get, didn't get to see it. So I took each one of these nuts in succession and I backed it all the way off to the top of the stud, put oil on it and pulled it down to 55 pounds. I backed one off, oiled it, torqued it down, moved to the next one. Backed it off, oiled it, torqued it down. When I got out here, the stud came out with a nut. As a matter of fact, um, this is a, a, an A-series normal engine with, with um, 
Uh, nine studs, if it's a Cooper engine, ooh boy, there's another stud here and another stud here at the back, but this is not a Cooper engine. In fact, I'd made this comment about these rockers because I'd never seen them before, but I was looking at the engine serial number and it says 99 something down, down there. Uh, so it's not, maybe, maybe those are original rockers. I, I, I'm used to the A-series cast rockers. These look real nice. Anyway, so I, I went ahead and um, the, the studs that came out, I just went over to the vise and put them in the vise and unscrewed the nut. One of them I could almost turn off with my finger um, and then put a little grease on them and took them, put them down back in the, in the engine with my stud driver and uh, maybe to five pounds. The stud driver does mar the threads. It's got three or four rollers and it puts little marks on the thread, but this isn't an aircraft engine, so you don't have to be that, that critical. Um, Anyway, I got them all torqued down to 55, and now I'm going to adjust the valves. Now, this is an old Mini, so the only way to spin the engine over is to get inside and put your foot down on the, on the button that spins the engine over. Well, I, I can't see what's going on, so I put it in fourth gear, and I'm just going to have to push the engine, and I, you'd have to push it 11 inches or 12 inches, and you can get the the whole uh, the whole cycle. So right now I'm going to look and see which which um, which of these are down, and it would be these are the these are the ones that are rocking or that are are open all the way right now. My number two video, I think, I, number two or number four video. I explain why you can adjust the valves quickly, and then I do it, and it's a seven minute video. I should probably do it again. We're not gonna do it today. Anyway, the opposite valve to, to this one is this one. Two plus seven equals nine. So two is open a little bit. We're gonna check, ooh, my gosh. Now I'm going for 12 thousands. I don't know what kind of cam this has got in it. I don't know anything. The original spec is 12 thousandths, but that's just huge in there. So let's, this one's down, so the opposite of this one is this one. And this one is huge. So we're gonna, we're gonna adjust these up to, to uh, 12 thousandths. Don't know, you know, if, if the cam, if the cam uh, requires a, a larger clearance for power, but it'll sure be quieter. Oh my gosh. So this, this adjuster screw is 24 threads per inch. So one full turn is 40 thousandths. So when we're trying to get the distance between not 10 and not 15, but in the middle at 12, um, it's, 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 uh, it's dicey to get it right in there. And when you tighten up the nut here, it makes it just a little bit looser. So should it be tight or loose, it should be consistent. If this one is tight or loose, it should be the same as all the rest. So that's, that is the secret to making this engine run smoothly is consistency. If you've got a N9Y plug in the first hole, then you should have a N9Y in all of them. If the front spark plug is gapped at 35 thousandths, then all of them should be gapped at 35 thousandths. We're after consistency here. So we'll just do these two and then I'll, I'll um, push the engine back and maybe you can see the valve train move. So this has got about the same drag as this does. So now we're gonna push the car back. You can see the engine rock. And uh, so we're going backwards. So one and three are closing, or are rather opening, excuse me. So you can see that the springs are very compressed here. It, the workshop manual says adjust number eight with number one fully open, not even close. You don't even have to be close to fully open. And you can get, get the valve lash correct. So, so the, opposite, the opposite of three 
is 6. Okay, the opposite of 3 is 6. And the opposite of 1, my hand isn't that long, is 8. And this is all based on this imaginary mirror, this is center line through here. So when this is open, that's adjustable. When, when this is open, that's adjustable. When this is open, that's adjustable. When this is open, that's adjustable. And the number of the valve open, one, added to the valve that you're adjusting, eight, equals nine. MGC owners or six cylinder owners, that number is 13. So I'm gonna finish the rest of these and the next thing we'll do is uh, check the compression, make sure that's okay, gap the plugs at thir 35 thousandths. I don't know if we'll be able to set the timing or not. I know we did that before, because uh, the heater's in the way. Oh my gosh, this thing's a real bugger to set the timing on, because you gotta go off the flywheel. Anyway, uh, who knows what's coming up next? We'll find out here in just a sec. So to check the compression, you know, which I've already done, my videographer had a more important task. Well, I, I did that. This is sort of stop start here. You, know, you, you pop these off, you pull all the plug wires off and you take all the spark plugs out. Now I like a speed wrench. It's called a speed wrench. And the longer it is, the less chance you have of snapping the spark plug. So as it turns out, the plugs were all installed with anti-seize. Big surprise to me when I got it all, all over my hands, but anti-seize is great stuff. So the plugs are all running. I cleaned these off with just a little bit of carb cleaner. I didn't walk next door to sandblast them because they'll, they'll clean out real fast. But the complaint was that the car is just put together, so it's running real rich. We'll figure out what that is with the, with the uh, carburetors. But anyway, I took all four spark plugs out and then used my compression gauge and uh, threaded that into each hole and put in, then had to go inside the car and push the button to make the starter motor spin over. And I, uh, some people bump it over three times. I usually bump it over 10. So uh, the first one I got 110 pounds and then these three I, I had 150 and I thought, well, that's kind of weird. Let me come back and I checked this one again. It was up at 140. You're allowed uh, to, to perform well. You should be within 10%, certainly within 10%. So and it, it may still have a piece of junk on it or uh, one of the valves and that's why it isn't sealing all the way or something. So it very well could be 150 all the way across. So I did that and then I, I made sure the plugs were all gapped at 35 thousandths. And I know the workshop manual on the MGs at least says 25 thousandths, but my experience is that a gap of 35 thousandths fouls out less. And those of you who follow me know I'm no fan of platinum plugs because once those foul out, they just, they don't seem to want to clear themselves out again. So when you put these things back in, you know, you're not using an, an impact wrench. You're just down to where it's snug and then just a, Little, little bit tighter, that's it, that's, that's good enough. So my next task here is, because the, the timing set, we set that when we, I remembered. We already set the timing, but to set the timing on this, there's a little window, you gotta slide the window over, you gotta roll the engine around, look at it with a mirror, and, and uh, to get a static timing, and this is a new distributor, a rebuilt distributor, so, uh, the, the timing will be great. So the next thing I'd, I've got to do is take these, these uh, air cleaners off. <clears throat> oh boy, but at least they're bolted in from the outside in. I don't know how they're threaded. I, I haven't seen this kind of setup before, but apparently the, uh, the holes in the front of the, on the flange, the front flange of the carburetors, must be, must be threaded, they are, how nice is that? And the gasket's on correctly. Of course, you can't get this gasket on upside down. Some of them you can, there's a little breather hole here that has to be open to the atmosphere. These filters only work 
if they're dripping in oil, of course now to make it drip in oil is going to drip oil on the inside of this car and my customer won't be happy if his beautiful inside of his car is all messy. So, so I'm going to blow them out and to put some oil on them, let them sit over on my workbench while I go ahead and adjust the carburetors. See how nice these carburetors look? Guess who did those? But that was, that was a months ago, so that I, I did those. Real nice shiny uh, dash pots. And again, if you want to see somebody who got, who got mirrors, mirrors on their dash pots, um, it's on my Facebook page, University Motors LTD. And some guy wrote in and just said how he stepped up through, started with 80 grit or some kind of real coarse paper. And uh, somebody else came in underneath that and said, well, wouldn't, wouldn't sandpaper scratch it up? It's like, yes, but that's why you, it's polishing. You start with something really coarse and work up, up, up until you're finally at the, at the aluminum rouge, white rouge, something um, on, the, um, on the buffing wheel. So I'm going to blow these out and I'll be back in a minute. So now I'm going to oil up the linkage of the carburetors and of course this is going to drip on the manifold. And, but I tell you, the whole car works better if it's oiled really well. Oiled and lubed, everything from the door strikers to the seat slides to the carburetors, everything just works better. Um, oil and grease makes everything work better, always. So this'll, this'll be really smoky when it starts up. And on oiling those uh, filter, filter cans. That's just like, it's not steel wool, it's more like chore boy. Uh, matter of fact, you use chore boy to replace the stuff if you can get inside them. Um, but it's a real heavy mesh of, of spun metal. And it's the oil on the metal that, that removes the particulates from the air. So some, they're paper filters. Those are the newer, uh, newer be uh, better, faster filters than an oiled filter. Um, but an oil wetted filter, there's nothing better to take particulates out of the air than, than oil. So even the, even the semi-tractor trailers running down the expressway that scare you when they go by you in something as big as this. You know, I've got a great big can on the side with a big um, uh, inlet, and that's an oil bath air cleaner to keep the inside of those um, engines real, real, real clean. So I really did oil up these air filters pretty tremendously. You can see all the oil that's dripping out of them. Better to drip on my stainless steel workbench here than on the customer car, though. I'll tell you that. Besides, it makes so much smoke. But anyway, we're all set to adjust the carburetors. So I'm going to start this up, but there'll be a whole lot of noise because there's no muffler. Very difficult to tune a car without a muffler. That's the way the customer likes it, um, noisy. And, and um, the first thing I'm going to do is balance the airflow. So we'll see what happens when we turn on the key. Make sure it's in neutral. Embarrassing to have the car take off. So it is barely. Barely running. I'm going to turn the idle up, turn both of these screws, maybe a full turn. Still isn't enough. There we go. I can hear right now that it's running rich. 
If I use the piston lifting pins and lift the air pistons, those are the pins on the underside of the body, you hear it, it speeds up and smooths out. So right away I know it's too rich. I'm just going to, this is just a coarse beginning adjustment. I'm just going to turn those adjuster nuts up a little bit. Tell it already runs a little bit better. Then we're going to judge the airflow by using a tube. Back that off a quarter and increase this a little bit. Idle's too high, but we're going for... Now I've reversed it. This one's drafting more. So we'll make, move this down an eighth. Move that up about an eighth. And just offhand, it's drafting about the same on each carburetor. So we have to wait for it to get warm before we make any mixture adjustment. And it's running too fast. I'm going to back each of these off by, oh, I don't know, quarter of a turn. And here's all that oil that I put on the linkage. It's starting to warm up now. I like to use 90 weight gear oil in the dash pots. Thermostat hasn't quite opened yet. We'll check the mixture again by lifting the air pistons. Uh, it's really hard to tell. I brought a screwdriver so I can put it down the throat. This one's still a little rich. Move it up two more flats. When you move the jet down, when you move the jet away from the body, it makes it, makes it rich. Doesn't, doesn't sound good on acceleration, but we're going to wait for it to warm up, make our final mixture adjustment. Our, the RPM fall, the RPMs fall there, so we're going to enrich in this one by two flats. Between every adjustment, you rev it up and blow it out. Still, still isn't right, but we're still adjusting it. No change on either of them. So I'm going to move them both down, maybe two flats. You could hear it slow down there. I, I could. It sounds a lot better when, when we rev it up. So. Our airflow is very different now, who knows why, but that's why you keep checking this stuff back and forth. So I'm going to move this, this one back an eighth, <coughs> increase this by an eighth, rev it up, speeds up a little bit. Speeds up a little bit. Now we're going to see how, how, how it runs if we pull the choke on. 
Ooh, no, we need to uh, need to change the position of the the screws, which are impossible to reach here. Oh my gosh, how are we even going to do this? It's a good thing these carburetors are rebuilt. I can move the screws by hand. These are the fast idle screws. I moved that one by hand. I'll try this one a different way. The goal is so that we, when we pull this up, the RPM jumps up to about 1,600. And although this is impossible for me to tell here, on fast choke, fast idle, this one is drafting a lot more. So I've got to fiddle with this screw down here that I cannot reach. I'm so happy that I put new screws and new springs. AUC 20, uh, 2451 and AUC 8483. I don't know the MOS numbers, 370 something. But always put on new adjuster springs and screws and always coat them in grease so you can make these adjustments by hand. You can't get a screwdriver up in there. And imagine if you had to take this and put a 4BA socket on the end, well, eighth inch, and go up underneath there and adjust it, it'd take you forever. So the fact that those screws can actually turn, we're getting it set up. After this thing is set to go, it isn't gonna change much for the kind of use that the car is gonna get. So let's just try this again. Okay. So that sounds about about the same, maybe, close. And our final, our final task here is to uh, our final task is to make sure that when we pull up on the throttle cable that both carburetors open at exactly the same time, and they do. So how nice is that? We don't have to, if otherwise we'd have to slacken off one of these, which looks like 5 16 but isn't, it's 3 16 British. Um, so it's a little bit bigger than that. If you've got metric tools, it helps. If you've got British tools, then you'll be spot on. Um, but anyway, you have to adjust those, those fingers, but this guy, this guy is great. So we're going to take a little break here. I'm going to put the air cleaners back on and we'll listen to it run with the air cleaners. But my videographer says that there's no battery left in his, in his uh, recording device. So let me tell you, I'm going to put these things on and we'll have to readjust it a little bit, drive it a little bit because there's be a lot of oil gets sucked in the engine right away. But that's as easy and as fast as a quick tune is. So, till later, safety fast.